But um, I think we'll start. We're going to start, if that's okay, please, on Matthew t- uh, 17. And um, I can hardly see. It might be a good thing. I'm so aware, aren't you, of how stubborn we are and how wonderful our Father is. Amen. Can you honestly say that? Yeah. I see us this morning as um, we're at the bottom of the hill with the needs of the world. Is my phone on airplane? I've got a terrible feedback. I had it all I'll turn again. it. I'll turn it down a bit. That's okay, fine. thank you. Thank you. Um, because if we, we all know... Um, Matthew 17, and um, I said to Alec, you know, I wish I could be different. I mean, uh, the, the way I present things, the way I, I wish I could be different. And then I see somebody going to slaughter, I do everything to try and drag them back, which makes me very reactionary to everything I hear, everything I see. I can't, I can't flatline, I just can't. And I think when um, we're in situations where we would desperately have liked a hand to come and to lift, not just us up, but um, our mothers, Sharon, to lift that should nurture us, we longed for them to be helped. And when and it, di- it didn't come, and, um, and then you find that the hand of Jesus, he didn't just descend his hand into the pit where we were, he jumped right in to the bottom of that pit and he himself took the venom of the snake at the bottom. The venom of our lives has gone and however we choose to serve him is our choice. And I see this uh, Matthew 17 to do with the second coming of Jesus because you see he has to touch those on the mountain just as he will have to come again and touch the nation of Israel. He will touch them, but he will touch them in his glory. And so if we can just read together, um, because we're so grateful for salvation, so Amen. grateful. Um, yeah. And if there's any tired people, Jesus is waking them Amen. up, and that's what today is about. So shall we start at verse one, please? Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and brought them up to a high mountain by themselves. He was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his garments became as white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tabernacles here. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Behold, a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And when the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were much afraid. And Jesus came to them and touched them and said, Arise and do not be afraid. You see, this glorious presence of Jesus, the voice will come. And the voice will come through the storm of Psalm 29. The voice that splits the cedars, the, the storm that will come. And they, you see, can you see these are, these are his disciples? They are falling on their faces and they are very much afraid. These are the people that Jesus takes up to a high mountain. And when we look in Revelation and see the great eagle is going to give a way of escape, they're still going to be terrified for 42 months. But you see, the only thing that can calm them down and the only thing that will do with, Jesus, with the, the Jews at the end of the age, Jesus came to them and he touched them and said, this think of the remnant of Israel, arise and do not be afraid. And they're going to lift up their eyes and they saw no one, not Moses, who could only bring the law, nor Elijah, who could only bring fire out of heaven. Because the fire will have come in the tribulation.
When we are afraid, we're holding God's word in contempt. When we are afraid. And I know so many people, and especially dealing as we are with cherishers, doesn't it? They have so much fear in their hearts. And Richard today is that he's, he's actually confessing before you that he is a stubborn man. And that takes something to say that. He's actually saying that he does have fear in his heart, that he's been given the strength of the lion. So Richard, on Friday, when you went through Friday, heaven opened and um, the might, about the mighty one coming for Israel, the, the father of a son, or the son of a father, was he? Contempt. And we're not to hold God's word in contempt. And Israel are holding God in contempt. As it were in the land of the Chaldeans, as it were in the land of robber-like demons, taking from us what God has given to us, certainty, surety. And then the image was seen at the fall. This is why I'm getting to it. But the first image they saw, it was the man and the lion and the ox and the eagle. The ox was going to be the laborious, patient servant. And he was going to deal with what came from the north. Well, what's going to come from the north, Richard, thinking about the Jewish people, is ultimately the Syrians. The Assyrian in the Old Testament is, is like the enemies that were joined with Russia in the New Testament. And then you see you've got the um, patient labour, you've got the victorious lion, and it, what it actually means is the fortification of his government can never be overturned. And that's what God's saying with the lion. But he couldn't send the lion first. That's why I was trying to show in Ezekiel, the man had to just be with the lion. Yeah. Because the ox's work had been done. Yeah. And in fact, he'd given himself, he'd laboriously <coughs> laboured, he's died, his blood has been sprinkled on the mercy seat, and he's ascended to heaven. And then the eagle, the only thing left of the eagle is the wings of the great eagle to carry God's people into the wilderness. And then Matthew 17 is how those people in the wilderness, which is what you're saying, are going to see. And they're going to see, like you, that they are going to finally have to trust him. And that's our problem. Yeah, we trust ourselves more. Even though we get it wrong, we trust ourselves, don't we? Even though we get it wrong, we keep thinking, I've got to be brave, I've got to deal with this myself, and the Lord is saying, learn to trust me. But then when you get to um, Revelation, it's no longer, he had to send the man, because the man is tender. Mm -hmm. And Christ is tender to the fact you can't trust him. He's tender to the fact you're full of fear. Because these men were full of fear. And that's why the voice had to come and override every single other voice. And then when you get to Revelation and Paul and John, it's written as seven letters, which means the end and completion of that message before heaven is finally going to open. And what does he find on the earth? Only a lukewarm church or whatever. And then immediately when you see the four figures, it's the lion. And then in the book of Ezekiel, which is the future temple, it's the man, the lion, the palms, and the cherub. You see, so the man beholds the lion, Richard. But the lion can be, and the lion's looking at the man. But they're all looking at the cherubim who've got their feet. Now, the cherubim mean redeemed mankind. My feet and your feet today are in the blood of the mercy seat. And that's why they're the trees planted by the water of Psalm chapter 1. And our roots are going to go down. And, the, and they're going down now. And we're finding out the strength of the water. And when you look at all these things, how marvellous that in the future temple we will somehow know and see that decorated all around the walls of the mile big temple in Jerusalem are lions facing man and man facing lions. The son of man is the lion of Judah. But the fact it had four faces, creation and weakness, is now under the control and the power of the lion of the tribe of Judah, who alone has opened the seals. And that's what I think today, and, and that is all about. So men aren't very good, are they, at uh, giving in and letting God? Men aren't very good. Women are a little bit, we're a little bit better at letting, and, and loving. we're a little bit better but, you know, we don't want to be frosty. We don't want to be crusty. We don't want to keep continuing with, that'll be all right. And like I said to Stephen, I don't want, we, we don't want to be flatlining all the time. No. Like today, Richard, it, it's a, a humbling place for you, isn't it? 
Yeah, nobody is you know, and I do feel American, you know. You are. Because it's your heart isn't tender to God, is it? No, it isn't. That's tender arrogance, to God. isn't it? Yes, it is. You know, yes, it many is. Many forms, but that's one of the worst. Yes. Yeah. I love this morning, don't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Fa family. Pardon? Family. Because Father is searching hearts and he's searching it, and that's why a lot of people don't want to come to a small building, they don't want to be with a few people, because they think, hey, I'm going to stay well underneath there. My friend said to me, John Tate, Julie, if I ever leave this church, I promise you I will backslide. I have needed your losing your life to win it again message from the front. And he did, he left, and he backslid for 15 years, and then he wrote to me just over two years ago and said, Julie, I want you to know I spent 15 years in the wilderness, but I found a church, and guess what? It's just like yours in region. And I realise I can't sit at the back. I've got to be scrutinised. I've got to be answerable to the brethren. And that's what's happening today. We're all answerable to each other. So shall we have a... Isn't it wonderful that in the presence of them thinking, we'll make place for the law in Moses, and we'll make place for the fire in heaven, and we'll... Make place for you looking so wonderful as your face has shone. God isn't going to leave it at that because he's going to say they, 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 their occupation with the law and the prophets has to go and all they have to do is see Jesus. And don't you like the interruption? Verse 5, while he was still speaking, this is poor Peter. He has been slapped back so many times, hasn't he? So while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud. This is the cloud that took them through the wilderness. Yes. Yes. They knew who it was. Yes. If the cloud didn't move, they didn't move. And when the cloud moved, they wanted to be with the cloud. But the cloud had also, as you know, just go for a moment back. Here we go to Ezekiel chapter 10, verse 19. They knew who this was. In the midst, and this is what the Jewish people had seen. Uh, and you see here again, uh, can you just see here again? I've highlighted this. Can you see Ezekiel 10 verse 14? And then put your other finger in Ezekiel 1 verse 10. You see, the vision that came in an opened heaven of Ezekiel was wheels. It's motion. It's about God moving towards us all the time. Can you see here, Ezekiel chapter 10? We're looking at verse, um, just start with verse 13, okay? The wheels were called in my hearing the whirling wheels. And each one had four faces, but now it's changed them. The first face was the, was the face of a cherub, because the cherub guarded the presence of God. The cherubim guarded the throne of God. But if you just go back to Ezekiel chapter 1, his first contact with those who were living in Chaldean in verse 3, which means, as it were, demons, once... It's coming from the north, look. Can you see verse 4? As I look, behold, a storm wind. This is a tribulation for the Jews. Was coming from the north. A great cloud with fire flashing forth continually and a bright light around it. And in its midst, something like glowing metal in the midst of the fire. That is Christ in the midst of our fire in one way, isn't it? Then when you get to 10, as for the form of their faces... Now he's going to communicate to Israel in captivity. And he had the face of a man. And that's on the Mount of Transfiguration. Mm. They're going to hear the voice. And finally, they're going to see the man who came for them, who they denied, is the one who's going to touch them and the only one who can tell them in his glory. No longer be afraid. And look at that, Richard. As for the form of their faces, each had the face of a man. Jesus is known here as the Son of Man. But all four had the face of a lion. Potentiality. We will be like him. We will be 
He says the righteous are as bold as a lion, and we will be. But the lion, Richard, is on the right hand, yeah. where Jesus. When I saw is the altar, yeah. The lion was the fire. With the, was on the right. Well, the lion was on the right. In the fire. I love days like that. But you know what right <laughs> hand means? Not really. It means the south land. It's love's land. Love's land. That's the direction that the father sends to find a bride for his son. Mm. You see, the lion is in love's land. And then here's the deer bull, because he's our beast of burden. <coughs> and out of his belly, on that last day with the one bull, and we were on the steps in Israel, the face of a bull is on the left. Well, on the left is where the anti-Semites are going to be, ultimately, isn't it? There's no blessing on the left. So the bull takes that, that's not a blessing. And he, when his laborious labor, deals with that and all four had the face of an eagle and then if we go over as we see go back to ezekiel chapter 10. <laughs> these disciples on the mount of transfiguration knew exactly who this was it had not been seen only in this word because it had left many years before and here they are, but now it's the face of a cherub. Brothers and sisters, we say a thousand times, the four-inch veil going from the holy place into the holy of holies had the cherubim on them. But when it was broken in two, those cherubim, not only did the veil break in two as Jesus gave his life for us, but the curtain was torn in two with the potentiality that all of the cherubim that uh, will redeem mankind were also torn in two as well. So we were redeemed on that veil. So cherub, cherubs are people who've been redeemed. Why? Because when Jesus died, he gave his life. The veil broke in two, and access was given straight away to the blood that was shed on the mercy seat. So that's a wonderful picture when you think of this, isn't it? I know it's a bit deep. And some say you move too fast. Some say... You don't go fast at all. Verse 16. Now, when the cherubim moved, the wheels would go beside them. Also, when the cherubim lifted up their wings to rise from the ground, the wheels would not turn from beside them. When the cherubim stood still, the wheels would stand still. And when they rose up, the wheels would rise with them. Here we go. For the spirit of the living being was in them. I think of these disciples. They, then the glory of the Lord departed from the threshold of the temple and stood over the cherubim. When the cherubim departed, they lifted their wings, rose up from the earth in my sight with the wheels beside them, and they stood still at the entrance of the east gate of the Lord's house, and the glory of the God of Israel hovered over them. These are the living beings that I saw beneath the God of Israel by the river Kabar. So I knew that they were cherubim. And when you go to Ezekiel chapter 11, look what it says just above verse 14. There is a promise of restoration. And he talks here, look, in verse 19. I shall give them one heart. He's speaking about those who held him in contempt. He's speaking about Israel in living in a land of demons. And remember when we said in Matthew 12, when he said, if one demon goes out, it will come back seven times stronger. That's the idolatry of Israel. And I'm going out of the house now. And I'm going to the beach. Because I'm now going to bring the Gentiles in. Because the Jews will not receive me. I came to my own, they would not receive me. That's exactly the order it comes in. Once he tells them, you're absolutely full of idolatry, Israel. They're still going, they're still wailing at the wall that probably isn't the wailing wall. And when we go back next year, that new temple may be built. It's only going to take 12 weeks to get up. And what they're saying now is that wailing wall probably isn't the wailing wall. Mm. I mean, that is the sadness of, that's what God's, he's pouring scorn. Yeah. He's saying the law, don't look at Moses, the law isn't going to bring you to this glory. You know the cherubim. You know they lifted up their wings and they left. And they're thinking, he, the cherubim, this is the glory of Israel. This is the cloud that took us through the wilderness. And we are terrified. And Israel, the future state of Israel, the remnant, will have to experience that too. 
that. It's easier to go to a wall as a, as a Jew than it is to open your heart to Jesus every day. It's easier to perform ritual, and that's all it is. But look what he's saying here, verse 19. I shall give them one heart, shall put a new spirit within them. I shall take the heart of stone that holds me in contempt out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statues. But they've got to be touched by Jesus before them, which is what the Mount of Transfiguration is, and keep my ordinances and do them. Then they will, then future they will be my people and I shall be their God but as for those whose hearts go after their detestable things and abominations I shall bring their con conduct down on their heads declares the Lord God then the cherubim lifted up their wings with the wheels beside them and the glory of the God of Israel hovered over them and the glory of the Lord he went up from the midst of the city and stood over the mountain which is east of the city olives and the spirit lifted me up and brought me in a vision by the spirit of god to the exiles in chaldea that name is as it were demons so the vision that i had seen left me then i told the exiles all the things that the lord had shown me all that's gone now they're standing on a mountain. Go back to Matthew 17 for a moment, please. They knew that this was the divine presence of God as it had led Israel through the desert and dwelt in the sanctuary. And they, they fell on their faces because actually God had brought them right into the Holy of Holies. And only the high priest went in once a year to see that glory. But they didn't have any incense to take in with them on the Day of Atonement. They didn't have the blood. They're just on a mountain with him. And what's more, dead people are there with him. Hallelujah. And because you can't understand it and scientifically prove it, people don't like you talking about religion, but I believe Jesus Christ was on that mountain. He took three people up with him. And I believe that Moses was raised from wherever his body was in Nebo, where we're going next year. And I believe also that Elijah, who had not seen death, there who could only bring fire from heaven although the chariots and horsemen of israel came and fetched him and he had to draw them away from the law and the prophets and we know that processing rodney rodney in luke when he says the law and the prophets speak of me then he says the law the prophets and the psalms they speak of me and when you go back look while i was still speaking sorry matthew 17 verse 5 while i was he, while he was still speaking a bright cloud this is Think Shekinah. He'd never appeared since Babylon. But now, this bright cloud is with them. And they heard his voice. And he had to come and touch them. The bright cloud overshadowed them. Behold a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And that is still, just turn for a moment please to Psalm 29. It is the call, it is the voice, it is the storm. Israel is still. Were they believing when the disciples were up there? No, they weren't. Was he showing them? Can you see this? Here it is again, the order. Have you ever, ever used a psalm or looked at a psalm and found some of these terrible things? And thought when you were first a Christian and you started to read the Psalms, did you ever think, my word, dash your children's heads on the rocks? Ooh, I thought, what's all this about? But then when you understand they're all prophesying of the coming of Jesus for Israel, you can you understand them better. But what's this? Because you see, the voice of the Lord in the storm, Psalm 29. This is the judgment of Israel's storm. This is the storm that's coming for Israel. Before they see Psalm 19, the heavens are declaring El. He's coming with healing in his wings. That's what the light is on the mountain. But for them to receive the healing, he has to come and touch him. After they prayed the prayer of Psalm 53. And as we looked yesterday, to get up those 15 steps through the gate, the Nicanor gate is like the east gate, they had to have the accompaniment of the flute. They had to have an instrument that had been pierced through in Isaiah 53. And then the flute and the harp went together. And when the rabbis and Jewish people see that it had 10 strings, 
they know that actually he was bringing the law, the fulfillment of the law. But the law would never bring them into the Holy Land, never bring them to where the new heart was. So when it says, look, Psalm 28, 29, very quickly, nearly going, the voice of the Lord, he's upon the waters. Well, the God of glory thunders, the Lord is over many waters. And here he is, this is the second coming of Jesus. The voice of the Lord, think of what they were looking at. They were looking for the Lord to still help them. They're looking for him will bring fire from heaven to deal with their enemies. But he is Jesus coming. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. Amen. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord. Here it is, Richard. He hews out flames of fire. The voice of the Lord is going to shake the wilderness and he's going to pick them up where the 12 spies went out in Kadesh. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. And then he says, the voice of the Lord makes the deer to calf. So as the deer pants the water is Israel, but they're going to give birth to nations, aren't they? Yes. And strips the forest bare is the Assyrian. And then look, always wonderful. And in his temple, everything says glory. glory. Put your finger in Psalm 42 for a minute. Please. Psalm 42. Psalm 42. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul pants for thee, O my God. Is the first book, because it says just above it, book two, Exodus means they escaped Pharaoh in the wilderness. Well, we know the wings of the eagle have, have given flight to the remnant and taken them into Petra. And then they're saying here, as the deer pants for the water brook, so my soul pants for thee, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? How hard is this, Lord? My tears have been my food day and night. While they say to me all day long, where is your God? But just go to six, because we haven't got a lot of time this morning. Here we are. Oh my God, this is Israel, thirsting in trouble. By the way, as you can clearly see, this is a masculine psalm. A masculine is given for those who have understanding that will be able to teach others. And it says in verse 6, Oh my God, my soul, this is Israel, is in despair within me. Therefore, I remember thee from the land of Jordan, which is death, and the peaks of where? Home, where the transfiguration, we believe, may have taken place. From Mount Mizar. So in this direction of Israel calling out in this psalm, they've got to go from death, which the law would bring them, or fire from heaven would bring them on the Mount of Transfiguration. But Herman means this. It actually means ban on evil. Evil wow. has got to be dealt with. Amen. While Israel, in the jaws of death and pounding for water, ban on evil and this is david bond in the next verse next line from mount mizar mizar means my littleness you've got to go from death you've got to go to the glory of mount hermon where jesus was transfigured to put a ban on any evil in our hearts and i'm talking of evil hearts of unbelief and then what happens when you start to operate in faith <laughs> Mount Mizar happens this is the hill of littleness you've got to become a little man and Jesus has to become bigger for you and that's exactly what happened so was it Hermon or was it Mizar go to Psalm 89 please I'd say any high mountain in my life any place of exaltation jesus is on there the order is from death to the ban on evil to i am a little man and when we look here 
That's um, Psalm, we're going to Psalm 89, please. Now, um, Psalm 89. And it's Psalm, as we know, it's verse 12, Rodney. But we're going to start, we're going to start just above the, at 8. You see, was there a remnant on a mountain? Yes. And look, verse 8, O Lord God of hosts, is his remnant title. Who is like thee, O mighty Lord, in your margin is Yah? Once again, the psalmist is thinking here. Do you know that um, Ethan, uh, Ethan is a wonderful name, isn't it? It means to be fostered um, by truth, to have a parent of truth in your life. The truth is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's the truth. I can forsake evil in my life and live for Jesus is the truth. But to do that, I must pass through Jordan, be willing to die. O Lord God of hosts, verse 8, who is like thee, O mighty Yah? Look what he says, thy faithfulness also surrounds thee. Look at this, thou, this is speaking, thou dost rule the swelling of the sea. Well, the Leviathan is in there, one of the beasts in the book of Revelation. Look what it says, when its waves rise, thou dost still them. Thou thyself didst crush Rahab like one who is slain. Thou didst scatter thine enemies with thy mighty arm. Look what he says. The heavens are thine, the earth also is thine, the world and all it contains, thou hast founded them. Look, the north, meeting all evil, and the south, love's land, thou hast created them. Tabor, Rodney, and Herman, shout for joy at thy name. So we're going to spend the next 2,000 years saying, was Jesus transfigured on Tabor or Hermon? But he's just clearly said in verse 11, the heavens are thine, the earth also is thine, the world and all it contains, thou hast founded them. The north and the south, thou hast created them. Tabor and Hermon, they shout for joy at thy name. You see here, the psalmist is saying the Jew of Hermon is like a great white throne. And you see, that's why a fire surrounds the throne of God. We can't come in and out as we like. There's a sin sensor in his presence. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens today. When people are being dealt with by the Lord or ministered by the Lord, in your heart you're saying, and I'm sorry, Lord. Did that happen? Mm -hmm. And I'm yeah. sorry, Lord. Just to finish. I don't want to... No, mm. mm. no, exactly. No, exactly. Was simply because yeah. the table had the light because yeah. the barrack and yeah, the that's it. was on top of the yeah. table. No, that's right. Would it matter? Where the light was because mm. the light was on both. And David prayed this morning and he said, Lord, all these things, they're not important because they're not eternal. They're not everlasting. They can be dealt with by him. But you know, Peter, he was forever being admonished, but he's always remembered as one. He, 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 he oh, it's wonderful up here. I'll build a place for you, Jesus. I'll build a place for the law. I'll build a place for him who's going to bring judgment from heaven. And the voice has to break in. All you've got to look at, Peter, is me. And he's actually saying there, prophetically, this is exactly how the, the Jews will feel. Because the Jews in Petra will know the pillar of cloud took them through and they escaped from Pharaoh. Well, they've just escaped from the beast that's been thrown down and the false prophet that has just come. The tail has swept. Just go for a moment to Isaiah on that. We, we, we are only going to do one more scripture I find so we're going home. Isaiah chapter 9. We love you, Julie. Oh, do you? <laughs> no, I know when somebody says I love you, Julie, means I'm getting this wrong. 
No, no, no. This is more of a, come on, old girl, you're nearly finished. Julie, I'm not saying that. I didn't even look at <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I love you too, I, with all of my heart. And I wouldn't change <laughs> Sorry, anything. And I said to Sharon, Sharon's going to go into people's ho homes along with Sarah, and they're going to lead people to Jesus Christ. Amen. And, Amen. They're gonna, and then you said that about your daughter. Because, you see, these people... Sharon is not disgusted by any filth that man can throw at her because she's had the m most filth that man could bring. Yeah. There's a scripture. I, I mean, there's a scripture. I'm, can you hear my uh, stomach? If you can, I apologise. Um, it's okay. I just need to show you this um, scripture. and um, But my head is just one. I want to show it because it is important. But... I haven't had time, and my computer says next door. I haven't had time to go into the shop and pick my computer up because this week has been so busy. Um, and I just wanted to show you this uh, thing about the tail. And, you know, we had... Um, so sorry. There is an order, you see. And I never stick to it, Father. But I wanted to just show you. And you, want, you, you will not know where I'm going. As did I say, Isaiah, I did. And it's this scripture. It, is it? Um, no. Just, you know, when you're on a call centre line, you just say, just put everything. I wanted to show you the sign of the, um, the false prophet here is his tail. And let me just put that in there. Um, Psalm 20, many crowns. Is it 14 of Isaiah 9? No, it's actually saying. It is really worth looking at, folks. And um, it really blessed me when I was doing it. So I wrote it down. And I thought, oh, I must. The, the ancient and the honourable, he is the head and the prophet that teaches lies. He is the tail. That's it. Where is it, Sharon? Verse 15. Of what? Oh, it is. You see, I get it in my mind, and uh, isn't that? Yeah, thank you, darling. You see, I can look at that. I've got it all highlighted. I can't see it. But can you see that? You see, when the stars fell, the tail swept the stars. It's all the process. I'm ready to bring my glory light down, but you're not ready for me. And when heaven opened, when he came to destroy all those on the earth, the temple of God and the Ark of the Covenant was to say, my grace is still there for you, Jacob. It's going to make Jacob into Israel. But you're not ready for me, so now a big red lion, a big red dragon's going to appear. And there's going to be a battle between Michael, who says, who is like God, and Satan, who said to Eve, you shall be as God. Yes. And that's the final battle, isn't it? And this scripture here, isn't this? Verse 15 of chapter 9, thanks, Sharon. The head is the elder and honourable man, and the prophet who teaches falsehood is the tail. That is the false prophet of Revelation 12, verse 4. And just to show, right at the end, if you go, if you go back with me, Revelation 12 for a minute. Revelation 12. Can you see? We're finishing. We looked in the Psalms this week. He says he's going to turn the shoulder round to speak to the face. You see that? You'll turn the shoulder round and speak to the face, and they'll have to announce that Jesus Christ is Lord. Then they're going to go to hell for a thousand years. Then they're going to come back, aren't they? They're going to actually finally face judgment after a thousand years. But after we've read 18, the nations were in, at 1118 of Revelation, the nations were enraged. Thy wrath came, the time came for the dead to be judged, the time to give their reward to thy bondservants, the prophets and to the saints, and to those who fear thy name, the small and the great. And this was the thing, to destroy those who destroy the earth. That will be the end, that will be Jesus appearing. As soon as he says that which we saw in Psalm 21, the temple of God, which is in heaven, is opened, and the ark of his covenant appeared in his temple. 
And there were flashes of lightning. Think of those men on the mountain, and sounds and peals of thunder, and an earthquake and a great hailstorm. But God is saying, before I destroy those who destroy the earth, I'm going to keep my covenant to the people of Israel. Because it immediately, and what most Jewish commentators say, Revelation 11 verse 19 should really be Revelation 12. Because it immediately takes you from destruction of the earth to the Ark of the Covenant, Israel, and then it says, and the woman Israel. And a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and the government of God on her head, 12 stars. And she had to give birth to a child. And she cried out being in labor and in pain to give birth. But you see, they weren't ready. And a straight away look, another sign appeared to get them ready. In heaven and behold, a great red dragon. Having seven heads, that's the fulfillment now of satanic government, and ten horns, there'll be nothing lacking in his wrath. And on his head with seven despotic crowns. And we've got lots of governments towards the end of the age who are going to take lordship. And then his tail swept away a third of the stars of heaven. And that's the tail of the false prophet. And threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman. You see, the dragon's problem is the bride of Jehovah, Israel, who is about to give birth, so that when she gave birth, he might devour her child. Well, thank you, Father. That never happened. This has nothing to do with the church, because if you just go to Daniel for one moment, I think it is Daniel, is it 11, Lord, or 12? Yes, it is 8, <laughs> verse 10. Yeah, this is not, you know when it says a third of the angels fell because of Lucifer, this is not that necessarily. But have a look at this. This is to come. There won't be a demon left in heaven, they'll be on the earth. And they'll all be faced towards Israel. And that's why, Richard, on that day, that vision, they've got to see that he's the lion, who's the tribe of Judah, their very own saviour. Verse 10. The little horn springs out of Syria. And then verse 9. And out of one of them came forth a rather small horn, which grew exceedingly great towards the south, towards the east, and towards the beautiful lands. And they dare to write Palestine in the margin, which we cross out and put Jerusalem. I have. So have I. And it grew up to the host of heaven and caused some of the host and some of the stars to fall to the earth. And it trampled them down. Terrible days are coming because Israel have not listened to the messages that were given. And they still haven't. Do they still hold God in contempt? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Do they still deny the Torah in many ways? Yes, they do. The last scripture is this. Psalm 133. Israel, as we said, Jesus has to come. They will be very afraid. He's got to take them to a mountain by himself. He'll take them somewhere by himself. But he's got to be seen. He's got to come down with the blowing of his robes. Have a look at this. Finish here. He's going to have brothers in unity. Jesus is going to have Jewish brothers yeah. in unity. And this is a song of a sense. And it's second to the last ladies. And as we learned yesterday, the song of a sense is the song of steps. And it was the steps to take people from the court of the women right up, eventually, to the Holy of Holies. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. And this is what's got to happen. Yes, 
It is like the precious oil upon the head, coming down upon the beard, even Aaron, type of Christ priest. It's got to come down upon the edge of his robes. And then the psalmist David reminds us, <laughs> shows us prophetically, it is like the Jew of Hermon. And that Jew of Hermon, that the disciples saw that day, and that Moses saw, and that Elijah saw, has got to flow down upon the mountain of Zion. And it is for there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Amen. This is nothing to do with the church. These psalms are to do prophetically Amen. with the return of the Lord Jesus Christ in glory for his people. It is like the Jew of Hermon. Isn't that great when David wrote that? Moses and Elijah, but Peter, James and John had not been born. The Messiah had not come. But it's from that mountain, the Jew of that mountain. And the rabbis say, Hermon is the white throne. And what flows from that mountain is going to flow to Zion. But they, they can say that. But we know it in the spirit. For there the Lord commanded the blessing of life forever. Ladies, here we are when we looked at the temple yesterday. And this is the greetings of the night watchers. And now, at the moment, we're still the night watchers. But this finishes off the psalm of the saints. Behold, bless the Lord, all servants of the Lord, who serve by night in the house of the Lord. This will be the remnant of Israel. Lift up your hands to the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Why? May the Lord bless you from Zion, he who made heaven and earth. And the challenge for us today, if you just go back to Mark, Matthew 17. Jesus has got to come in his glory. And he'll come in his glory to them through the word, won't he? And they'll pray the sinner's prayer. Then he's going to lead them. We'll be with him when they behold his glory. Jesus there, so they have to go through the area of the fiery red dragon in verse 6. When the disciples heard this voice, which is the voice of splitting the cedars, yes. the voice that's causing the deer to cough, they fell on their faces. It doesn't say, and they rejoiced. They were made afraid. These were still the Jews in the oven of Nebuchadnezzar. And a fourth one walked amongst them. And Jesus came to them and touched them, and he has, he's the only one who can say, Arise, and do not be afraid. And lifting up their eyes, O remnant of Israel, they saw no one, not the law, not the one who can bring fire from heaven, because that's come and burnt the earth, as in Song of Solomon chapter 1, except Jesus himself alone. This is the challenge for us for the week. And as they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. Hallelujah. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then do the scribes say this? Can you see that in your own life? You've had a wonderful time with the Lord, and then you've prepared for some tragedy and disaster. It's so true. And he answered and said, Elijah is coming and will restore all things. But I say to you that Elijah already came and they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they wished. So also the Son of Man is going to suffer at the hand with all the glory. The Son of Man is going to suffer at the hands. This is the man of the opened heaven that Ezekiel saw. Then the disciples understood that he had spoken to them about John the Baptist. And here we go. I believe there are homes here where demonic powers are at work and are not being defeated by the glory cloud. When they came to the multitude, a man came up to him, falling on his knees before him and saying, Lord, have mercy on me, on my son, for he is a lunatic and is very ill, for he often falls into the fire 
and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. Mm. And Jesus answered and said, it's so true, brothers and sisters. Oh, on that... He's only upbraiding them for being unbelieving. That's all he's doing. Oh, unbelieving and perverted generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him here to, to me. me. And when you've got people in your lives, you have got to know that Jesus lives alive inside of you. And Jesus is saying, stop doubting and bring him to me. Yeah. Not to your thinking, not to your pattern, not to your level of faith. But to Jesus within you, that's the challenge. It challenges me, does it you? Bring him here to me. And some of you, in some of your long-term problems, go home looking as miserable as you came, and there's no Jesus to take home, if you're honest. And then Jesus rebuked him, and the demon came out of him, and the boy was cured at once. I'm not saying, by the way, that every illness is a demon. But I am saying, there's no point in cow-tailing to someone's apprehension of evil in your own strength. If it came in supernaturally, it will leave supernaturally. But we have to go through the Jordan and be willing to die and put a ban on evil. And I'm vociferous against evil. Like I, 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 I deal with it all the time. And then you recognise how small I am, Father. I'm at the hill of Mizar. Had the littleness of me. You need to deal with me. And then I think Herman is attached to Jordan and littleness and a ban on evil. And that's what that fire and that lion is about. And I hope today, Richard, even with you, that's got to be from the Lord. That the Lord will burn up the, the rubbish in our lives that stops us trusting. Because that challenges me. Bring him here to me. But not... Okay. When, you said something to me this morning, didn't you, Alec, when I was upstairs? I just don't understand how stubborn some people are, really. You know, stubbornness. <coughs> Worrying where you're going to park your car when you go to Scotland. I don't care if the car's gone when I'm not back. I don't care. And you shouldn't care. You shouldn't care. You trust. You trust. What difference does it make if somebody steals your car? How many times I've lost my bag and my things out and say, yeah. I've got, well, let them have it, but let them have my life. They Just wouldn't want it. Just in the day, there's no other way. Yeah. I've lost my banker's card again. Oh, I better ring up the bank. Well, have it, dears. Take the card, break into the card, do whatever you like. I'm not bothered. But I'm to cultivate within me trust in Christ. And that's the challenge. Now, if you're worried about those things, you're never going to be able to confront a demonic power. You won't. We're going to have to. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be difficult. Sin is going to get greater. Darkness mm. is going to get darker. Mm. But Christ, well, the disciples were afraid. Yeah. And that voice overruled. And, you Amen. know, for us, on any high place we lift up, let Jesus be from the top. And you see, why are we waiting at the bottom of the mountain when the glory is up there? You know, that's that's the whole... He's up there yeah. for us. He's already exalted on Zion's yeah. holy hill. We haven't got to feel we're powerless. But when the rest of our life is powerless, we can't suddenly get power no. to deal with a big issue if we're not living that yeah. faithful life. Yeah. And the biggest thing with all of us is self, isn't it? Yeah. And here yeah. he is now. Don't listen, he says. He says, he, you know, he touched them. And uh, so don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Father, I just want to say thank you that we're here. Amen. Opposite the crown. We serve one who's wearing the, the crown. The crown, amen. We thank you.